wasn't in a hurry to get up off the ground, just uh, taking it easy. Out here with two guys on trikes. David's out here and uh, starting it up his unit. And so we're going to just cruise around this area for a while, wait for David. He's going get to get it going. And we've got a couple areas we want to cover today. Went ahead and set the torque adjustment on, made a little bit of change to it. I think I've got it now. I hope so. It's been a while. Been playing with it long enough. But of course, as soon as you adjust it, you'll get a crosswind or something that'll pull it to this one way or the other. And it'll be one thing or the other. So it's kind of nice to have. I don't think it's the perfect solution. A little overcast. It's about uh, 6 o'clock. We're about 453 feet in the air. Looking out towards the Shockton. Doing about 33 miles an hour. with trims are set at 3. Torque adjustment is on. It's a little cool up here, not too bad. It's in the probably the low uh, 70s to maybe 69, 70, somewhere around there. And you'd give me a, a thermometer temp gauge and put on, uh, put on my dash here. And I've kind of looked for one. You know, I'm one of those guys that's kind of anal about things. If it isn't exactly what I'm looking for, uh, I just keep holding off and holding off and looking and looking and looking. My wife hates that. Such a penny pincher. Takes me a long time to make a decision on what it is I'm going to get. So a car dealer he hates me. Can't make a decision on what color I want. We're just holding tight in a holding pattern up here, waiting for for David to hopefully get it running. Spark plug was wet. It was getting sparked. It was almost like it's flooded. Last night we came out and uh, his uh, pull rope broke. His starter rope broke. So he packed it on in and went home and came out today. And Sometimes these things are one thing or the other. It's a coarse air unit usually just runs and runs and runs. I mean, he just, uh, I think, flies like a tank. Never, uh, he never has any problems with it. But he is looking for a new uh, Moster 185 unit to mount on it. Or a really good used one. His best bet is probably get a 20 series is my guess. I don't know anything about them, but to understand they have the exhaust on them that's been modified and doesn't crack and break and has a couple other updates to them. After today, it looks like the weather's going to really suck. Wheel can fly. I'm not sure what's going to be, uh, what it's going to be like on the 7th, but the uh, forecast looks like 20, 30 mile an hour winds on the 7th. So if you see this video, or I'll try to text you and let you know, but you probably already have the weather for this area. I know you and a few guys are coming up here. I hope it uh, smooths out. I'd like to go out and fly with you guys. About uh, 38, 3900 RPMs. It's running fairly smooth. There is a sweet spot here. My mid-range has always been a little fuzzy. Winds were uh, gusting 11, 12 earlier until 6 o'clock, so but actually it, uh, it uh, has really been smooth. I haven't seen any of the gusts that they were talking about, so uh, it's a really nice night so far. These folks have a nice setup back here on the back end of the road. Kids out here playing little 
football. Nice cabin right up here, hidden in the trees. 420 feet, 33 miles an hour. And we're just over in the West Lafayette area. Beautiful area to fly. Low land down by the river, Tuscaroras River, flying out of a private airfield. There is a uh, airfield over in Coshocton that is a public airfield or a commercial airfield. There's not many planes that fly in and out of there. There's some corporate jets, some locals that will fly in and out of there. Coshocton is a historic area. It's got Roscoe Village. Years ago, they had a lot of, oh, I don't know what they're called, little barges, little boats that go up and down the canals. About 30 miles an hour, being pushed by the wind. Been flying for about 15 minutes. I had somebody ask me, uh, and I know exactly who asked me. I asked me about uh, how long can I fly on this tank of gas? Uh, basically, because I talk about it, about an hour that I fly. And normally, uh, with the guys that I fly with, uh, they are, uh, you know, usually fly with with one guy that uh, has an hour with their fuel. And uh, whoever has the less fuel will fly until they run out, you know, until they get uh, near empty. So uh, usually it's somebody that's sitting about an hour, if that makes sense. Uh, David used to fly for an hour, but now he has a bigger tank. Uh, so we could go up longer. But normally uh, an hour is kind of comfortable. Uh, if you fly two, three, four hours, I guess, weather changes or it gets dark or, or something. You're in the morning, you're weather changes and you start getting thermals in the evening it gets dark so uh, but uh, no these uh, this unit has a little under, I think it's four and a half gallons and it doesn't get that good of gas mileage or fuel consumption uh, two, two hours 15 probably be the most but you know I've never flown uh, the tank out or flown it that close I you know, maybe an hour and a half is the most I've flown, and I landed, and there's, you know, plenty of fuel left, but, and so my burn rate, uh, I used to be able to tell you what my burn rate is, but now I just uh, fly for an hour, and I know how much gas it, it takes to fly for an hour, so some of the four-stroke units can fly for quite a while, my understanding. I don't know if there's many of you trikers out there that have actually gone up and flown for four hours straight. Where were you heading and how far did you go? I think when I first started back in 2017 or somewhere around there, I was a little more ambitious about flying longer. And now I'm just getting old and a curmudgeon and I enjoy coming out here and flying for about an hour. If I fly out to the lake from here, or if I'll fly over to Graham Field, you know, I'll be pushing it to, you know, an hour and a half. But, uh, you know, it's always somebody. Somebody, when you fly with, uh, you know, even myself, something happens, and then you, you know, go back and fix it, go up and fly again. So that's my story, and I'm sticking to it. 194. Been flying uh, for about 20 minutes now. Just kind of waiting on David to see if he can get that thing started. I know he wants to fly really bad, so he's trying everything. There goes a deer. That's a, that's a buck. Almost looks like it's got one, uh, like it has a half a rack. Yeah, it's got half a rack. 
I don't think you guys can see it, but we won't follow him. We won't. We'll just leave him alone. He's laid down there in the laid down in the deep field there, kid. He will swoop in here for a landing here. <laughs> 